Okay, folks, turn 19. The blood hunting has begun. Uh, got a reasonable number. Didn't capture any in Wellrid because our unrest was so high, but we're beginning to patrol there. Uh, troops are moving. Uh, moving up towards Edoral, 166. We've got about 50 Burgmeister Guard heading in that direction. Waiting one more turn to recruit another pile of Burgmeister Guard here in the UIC. Uh, who will be led by Carmont, who currently is just blood sacrificing, because Lady Tamarion can blood sack, and so since I have some blood slaves, I'm sacrificing a few of them in order to push my Dominion a little bit further. So we'll end up with about a little over a hundred Burgmeister Guard plus the uh, the chariots joining our little army here in Edoral. And I think I might also send a couple of mages. My research hasn't actually increased in a couple of turns because I have been, of course, pumping out conjurers and starting my blood hunting. But, uh, random events this turn. <laughs> I found a hidden lab which gave me a freaking staff of elemental mastery. And then I found another hidden lab which gave me a marble armor plus a bunch of, of gems. Uh, luck three for life. Uh, we also lost 50% tax in Terum, but like really, who, who cares about Terum? Like, it'll be fine. 100 income, I can live without. Uh, staff of elemental mastery is amazing. Uh, we've got, uh, we're forging Sanguine Dowsing Rods since we've hit Construction level 4. Uh, we're going down Conjuration, so we'll hit Conjuration level 4 in a couple turns. Uh, we're casting Dark Knowledge, forging more Sanguine Dowsing Rods, and Blood Hunting. Uh, I would like to move away from Blood Hunting my forts, of course, but we're gonna move into Halemire, which has one of those random labs that just popped up in it. And we're gonna start Blood Hunting the absolute shit out of Halemire. We're gonna burn this province to the ground. Um, we need some we need some units to do that with, so we're recruiting more Burgmeisters over there and a bunch of militia over here that we're going to filter in with our mages in order to patrol. I would love to recruit an indie commander here, but I actually have zero resources, so I can't. So what I'm going to need to do is I'll re need to recruit a an indie commander down here. I think I'm recruiting a conjurer right now. Let's just recruit two indie commanders to lead the patrols. And my scouts, meanwhile, are filtering up there and down there in order to carry blood slaves away. We've got a guy patrolling up here. And um, we'll give put some more units in there. So we've got 25 units patrolling. We're pumping out a few more every turn. Down here, of course, as I said, no resources, so we can't recruit anything. But that'll be fine. Uh, down here, we're still recruiting conjurers and militia to join the patrollers. And the Burgmeister Guard's there, so we're we're building up patrol forces here to help patrol Hailmire, and we're gonna we're gonna just eat the population of Hailmire down to probably four thousand or so. Um Setica definitely need to start blood hunting sometime pretty soon. Same with Esquania and Dragon Ridge, as well of course as Wellrid, which is our least valuable province as the one that I'm happiest to burn to the ground. Our second least valuable province after well, our third after Wellrid and Hailmire is actually Azamar. I don't want to lower the population too much because of the recruitment point thing, so I'll probably be eating the wield instead. But definitely we need to start getting the blood hunting going in a big way. I am, I think, on track to get a, a Vampire Lord, if not maybe by turn 24, shortly thereafter. Because I am going to need to empower a guy in blood. So that's going to cost me those extra, extra blood slaves. I don't know that I can accumulate that many that quickly in the next five turns. But we'll give it a shot. So... Uh, that's about all that's happening this turn. Not a whole lot going on. We are still being quiet. We're moving towards uh, Monarch Woods and Kalkheim. We've got a total of six assassins here with a seventh sneaking in. We've got an eighth there and two more down here for a total of 10 plus 12. So yeah, we'll get up to 12 assassins here in Sailor's Haven and we will start murdering the fuck out of his cultists uh, pretty soon. Oh, plus there's two there. So wait, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. Yeah, it's actually 14 assassins that we're going to just start murdering the hell out of his cultists with. Um, and yeah, that should be very, very interesting. We'll see how we'll see how well that works. We'll see if he's bothered to assign long dead bodyguards to all of his cultists. And if he has, we'll see how effective they really are. We can also see here that Illwinter has expanded into the Sacred Lake and presumably also this province. Um, and hopefully he will join us in the war on Kalkheim fairly soon. Kalkheim is definitely just pumping out those long dead. Uh, they've got a whole bunch down here along with a bunch of Kalkheim city guard and Kalkheim infantry. So basic infantry troops over there. I don't know who they're fighting, but I think they're fighting a war against somebody. And I feel like I need to go to war with them pretty quickly or they will start spiraling absolutely out of control. So we've got one, two, three, four, five, six visible forts still. Um, I bet they have actually seven or eight. 
So they're they're beating me on forts, which is uh, unsustainable. My income is stagnating because I haven't expanded in a while. So if we if we look here, we can see that my income once again my income line is black. So for some reason it's not visible, but it goes up here and then it just goes straight across. Um, and my research is is trending upwards very quickly, which is great, but I don't know why. The fact that that line is uncolored, is just black, is actually very annoying. But um, we'll figure out how to do something about it. Um, Late Age Relay's Dominion is starting to destroy his own troops, but fortunately I am being protected here actually by... Uh, Elwinter's Dominion. Unfortunately, it's my, my research here is good because I have my Dominion there with my magic, but this is one reason I really want to push my scales by sacrificing. I need to keep my Dominion in my forts in order to keep those magic scales to keep my research efficient, because if this Drain 3 Dominion he's got gets into my fort here, then my Conjurers will go down to 6 research points and my mag Magi will go down to 8, which would suck. I would hate that. I prefer not to have that. Let's actually, let's save a couple of gold, couple pieces of gold. So, that's turn 19. I'll see y'all in turn 20. Like I said, we're, we're getting close to some pretty cool breakthroughs. As soon as we start getting the vampires, uh, we're going to race down Evocation and to hit Evocation level 5 so they can Shadow Blast and we can Strange Fire. And then we'll also grab some enchantment. We're going to have to do a very wide spread of research paths. But um, I think pretty much Evocation, Enchantment, we will absolutely want Alteration. We're already getting Conjuration. Ah, this, this nation wants everything in terms of research, and it wants it all immediately. So we'll just see what we could do. But in any case, thanks for watching. I'll see you in turn 20. Okay, folks, turn 20. This one's going to be pretty quick because I'm about to leave for the evening. But uh, we're still blood hunting. Not a whole lot of luck here, possibly because the unrest is still sky high. But we've got some more patrollers to help with that. We are out of gold. We're recruiting another adept of the Iron Order. We're starting to spam out some crossbows as well, because I think they'll be important. We've got our little blood hunting party going on right here. One, two, three, four, five blood hunters in Hailmire. They are going to eat this province in record time, but they should generate hopefully something like 30 blood slaves, 20, 30 blood slaves between the, the all of them. Got a blood hunter down here as well. These guys are just researching. Um, I should actually have some more blood hunting going on, I tell you what. Down here, yeah, we're done income ED. Just, uh, just, just blood hunt a little bit, why don't you? We're not forging many more sanguine dousing rods. We are forging a skull staff this turn. And then after that, and I'm still trying to hit that turn 24 mark. Not sure if I'm going to make it, but I think I might. I think I might make it. We'll see if we can. And the wield, of course, we're going to be turning into a blood hunting pit as well. I think I'll, yeah, I'm churning out a whole bunch of militia and a warrior mage, uh, Stene is taking some Hobergs over here, where I'm also churning out a whole bunch of militia. He's going to pick up those, plus the militia I've already churned out, and move up to Hailemire to help patrol the hellhole that Hailemire is about to become, or the possibly the Hellmire, the hellhole, something like that. Uh, our troops are moving out. We have our good friend, Carmont the Cardinal, leading a total of 90 troops towards the front line. We've got another 53 there, so a good grip of soldiers, well over 100 Brave Bergmeister guards coming to join the legions uh, to help us out in our fight against the oppressors. Not sure if this army is going to be quite enough, but it might. Uh, we're also pumping out some Deer Tribe warriors to reinforce our Bone Tribe contingent in order to uh, help help the the undisciplined berserkers fight more, something like that. Fight more, fight better, etc. It'll be a good time anyway. I think with a solid line of infantry plus about fifty tramplers. I think we'll be able to put pay to this army, because this army is literally nothing but chaff infantry and one mage. One real mage. Ah, uh, we've got a whole bunch of stalkers lined up, just absolutely salivating for their chance to stab some cultists. Uh, the long dead here are increasing exponentially, which is definitely what we expect to see. Um, they may start patrolling. Which I would hate. They did, this turn, catch a, a scout in Kark. So they are patrolling there. Um, I don't want to preemptively start assassinating. Actually, I kind of do. I kind of do want to preemptively start assassinating. Um, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. What do you think? Uh, should we go in try to try to kill off eleven? Try to kill off eleven cultists this turn. We've got a 12th guy coming in. I think I might be able to just fucking lock this place down if there aren't that many already in there. 
Hmm. I guess the problem is I don't have any hard commitments on anyone else's part to go in, and I do not want to fight Kalkheim alone. Well, actually, I kind of do want to fight Kalkheim alone, to be fully honest. Like, I'd be fine with that. Uh, yeah, okay. Let's just assassinate the hell out of some people. And let's see if he's doing the... Because, like, there's a micro-intensive way to, to prevent this from being super effective, which is to assign every cultist five skeletons as bodyguards. Five skeletons could probably beat a stalker, especially when they're Ulmer skeletons with uh, great swords and plate armor. They can, like... I mean, they're tough enough that these attacks won't necessarily destroy them like they would normal skeletons. And even past a 75% miss chance, they hit hard enough that they only have to hit once, and prop 5, 10 HP will not save a stalker from being hit like that. I mean, high defense skill, yes. Um, Assassin 3 will definitely help, because it will prevent many bodyguards from showing up, but still, it, it, let, let, let's see what happens. Let's just see what happens. Let's see if we can neutralize Sailor's Haven with mass assassins, or if it's just a dead letter strategy. And if this is a dead letter strategy, then that might tell us that we want to not border Kalkheim immediately. Um, if we if we can't succeed in neutralizing some of their skeleton production, then maybe we want to just kind of leave Monarch Woods be for the moment uh, and focus on building up vampires or something. Now, I have heard that Prime is in serious trouble, so I'm going to contact them and be like, hey, that non-aggression pact we had, how are you doing? How's things? How's the family? Are you sure about that whole non-aggression situation? So I'm actually going to cancel these militia real quick. Just going to cancel those up. And we're going to grab us some Bone Tribe, I think. Uh, let's get a few Burgmeisters in there as well, since we have some extra resources. There we go. We'll just grab some infantry real quick. Uh, or we could just do Centaur Chariots, I suppose. Chariots work really well. Let's grab some Centaur Chariots real quick. Maybe we can roll in and carve off a few couple of provinces, maybe just fields of gold, Balkoria, something like that. Maybe we can get a little bit of a little bit of prime action for ourselves if they are in fact going down. It looks like uh Rulala may already be heading that direction with this army. I'm not sure if they're going there or there. Probably there if that's a possibility. Um, just because it's much more valuable, but we'll see. They may be going down here to Fastir. So I'm gonna contact Prime. I don't have time to do it right now, so we'll have to do it after the turn is ticked, unfortunately, but that is my turn, and I'll see you all in turn 21. All right, folks, turn 21, and look at that. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11 successful assassinations. Every single one of them is successful. Uh, cultists just don't put up a fight. Uh, he wasn't bodyguarding his cultists, so I uh, didn't have any unfortunate deaths, and in every case... The assassin just ran up and stabbed them. His blessing, by the way, is a massive, massive rainbow bless. And this is like a dormant or imprisoned rainbow bless. So we've got a ton of undead leadership, magic leadership, defense attack, shock resistance, cold, poison resistance, no fire resistance, interestingly. Reinvigoration, mat HP, blood surge, mountain survival. Like, this is this is the little bit of everything bless, which is fine. Um, And every cultist just got daggered to death. Now, obviously, he's going to start patrolling now uh, with his piles and piles of long dead. So he's got 140 long dead here. My assassins have stealth 80, so 140 units patrolling would be very, very likely to find them. However, uh, I don't know how many of these units are cultists, so this is kind of a gamble, but I'm leaving all 12 of these guys here to assassinate. And the reason I'm doing that is if you assassinate a patrol commander before they patrol then they don't patrol. So, if he's putting all of his long dead, so let's let's look at one of those assassinations again. You can see he's got uh, 85 undead leadership on his cultists. So he could have two cultists patrolling with all of the skeletons he has here. In which case, if I happen to assassinate one or both of them, the patrolling just won't happen. Or he could have the skeletons broken up among many patrollers, in which case, I can assassinate them bits and by bits and pieces and lower the strength of his patrol without maybe fully removing it. Uh, in either case, I think... I, I'm, I'm just gambling, and this is a gamble on... This is a gamble about how many cultists he has here, right? I'm gambling that he doesn't have enough cultists here to make the probability of him 
successfully finding all of my assassins with his patrols high. Now I could move my assassins around, but of course if I move my assassins around he's just going to be patrolling more heavily in other places. So, I mean, what I could do is I could move them all up here uh, and assassinate there because he's got somebody here upgrading this palisade, but he's probably not patrolling very heavily yet. We can see even more uh, forts going up, but I think I'm just going to take the gamble on assassinating here. Now, if I lose these guys, it'll be a little bit of a blow, but honestly, not that much. Like, I've already killed 11 of his cultists. If I now lost all 12 of my assassins after one more round of killing cultists, I've still come out ahead. Um, because they'll kill, you know, assuming that he's assigned five undead to bodyguard every cultist, okay? Odds are I'll still kill four or five of them, maybe more, uh, depending. And, uh, and then if I lose all 12 of my assassins, like, my assassins are barely more expensive than his cultists are. If we look at the cultists, cultists are 45, my assassins are 65. 60, actually. So they're 15 gold more expensive. So 12 assassins times 60 gold is uh, 600, 720. Uh, 11, or, well, it might be 22, but 11 cultists are 495. So all I have to do is kill another 5 or 6, and I'll at least have broken even, even if all of these assassins then immediately die. Uh, and they're very, they're cheap, they're easily replaceable. It's fine. Like, I'm not worried about it. This guy's going to walk over to the Order of the Divine Flame just to see if Demise is really recruiting a whole lot of his um, polar marks. And my army is assembling. This turn, the army will be in place and we'll be able to see its full grand extent. Uh, we've got, what's that, 80... Uh, 145 Burgmeister Guards, 48 Centaur Chariots, and then 47 other mixed infantry. So overall, a pretty good grip of troops. Now, interestingly, over here on Flemistan, clearly somebody attacked Pazuzu and lost. They killed almost all the Storm Demons, but they could not kill the Lord of the Plague Wind. So I might actually send my army over there to do that instead of going through Monarch Woods. Uh, I mean, going through Monarch Woods would be great and all, but also whatever Pazuzu has might be really cool. I don't know. I think I'll probably go through Monarch Woods. Monarch Woods would be a good place to be. Uh, we've got more troops churning out, more Burgmeister Guards, and crossbows. Now, against the undead, the crossbows are not actually going to be the, the best. So I'll tell you what. Well, I, I tell a lie because against the undead, crossbows can carry flaming arrows. Not as efficiently as pygmies can, obviously, but pretty efficiently. And all I need to do is hit enchantment level 4, and flaming arrows will be mine. That will happen pretty soon, and then I can form a communion to cast it with the greatest of ease. So, uh, Libar here... I can't cast, I haven't researched Thaumaturgy level 3 yet, unfortunately, but research is going up. Uh, I got a fantastic random event this turn that gave me plus 1300 gold. So I'm upgrading the Mercs to a Citadel, and I actually have almost enough gold to upgrade that to a castle, so I'll tell you what, I'm going to just cut out a few of my Burgmeisters up there, my, my Burgermasters. We're just going to build a castle there. We're patrolling up here, blood hunting. We have 15 blood slaves because we are empowering Dvitno into blood. So pretty soon we will start summoning vampires. In fact, I may be able to do it next turn because the blood slave income was pretty decent this time. Um, Dirk was the only one blood hunting in the mercs, but he didn't find any blood slaves. So he's blood hunting again. We're still blood hunting a little bit down here. I don't think I have any more sticks. I'll t uh, yeah, just research. And then we're still blood hunting the shit out of Halemire. So we found 25 blood slaves in Halemeyer last turn. If we find an equivalent number of blood slaves this turn, we will be able to summon our first vampire. <clears throat> and then we can use that vampire, of course, to do more blood hunting. Uh, we contacted Prime. Prime is seem, seems to think that he's still in pretty decent shape, so good for him. We are going to start recruiting stalkers up here, I think. And we're going to go with a slightly cheaper army on this side. We're going to just pump out a whole bunch of... Bone Tribe mixed with Burgmeisters. Because the uh, the Burgermasters are a very, very efficient way to make sure that we're using all of all of our resources. And then we can get one crossbowman as well. So I'll be turning out a mix of infantry there. We've got Olga standing here with a few militia building the Citadel. We've got our four Centaur Chariots. Um, these infantry can be used if necessary to go into Fasadir or possibly Fields of Gold. Edelhar is moving around site searching. Uh, beyond that, our site searching is close to done. 
We do need to sight search some more places for blood and death, but uh, I may just keep casting Dark Knowledge for that. I've cast Dark Knowledge a few times now and haven't found anything, which is sad, but you know, these things have. I've actually only cast it twice, I guess. Um, tell you what, I'm gonna alchemize up some more death gems. And we're going to start casting Dark Knowledge again. So yeah, hit Esquania with it and uh, cast Dark Knowledge a couple of t couple more times. See if we can get a little bit more death income because our our death income is just not, just not good. I would like it to be better, but we have a lot of fire gems, a lot of fire gems. So in two turns, we're going to hit Conjuration level five. And when we hit Conjuration level five, we are going to summon us the shit out of some Demons of Heavenly Fires. Oh baby, you have got to believe it. We're going to have Demons of Heavenly Fires up in here. We're going to have mages. We're going to have all kinds of cool stuff. Um, so yeah, the Assassins, hopefully we'll get another round, of, another full round of Assassination on Sailor's Haven. Um, the the indication that we succeeded will be that we kill off, <laughs> well, we kill off 12 more cultists and there's no patrolling done and nobody's caught. Um, even if they do manage to patrol with a majority of their skeletons, they probably won't kill all of them. Uh, the stealth is... Estimate of the number of patrollers required to have a 50% chance of discovering the stealthy unit. So with 12 stealthers, even if they do patrol with 140 units, um, some should still slip through the cracks. And so, like I said, that's a that's an exchange rate I'm willing to take. And then this army will go in against Monarch Woods and should be able to do some real damage, especially with Carmont there and um, Shaggy the Prophet throwing banishments. So we should be able to cut through the undead very, very quickly. And then Dead Flesh the Lich will be the only other person standing in our way. That's a Spring Hawk Throne, so that's very dangerous. But, uh, we should start building up the forces down here to potentially go in against Prime as well. And, uh, yeah, we're in pretty good shape, I think. And we'll also see how vulnerable, if if vulnerable, Demise is, and if we can go in there. Our income is starting to, to waver, to slump in the face of our upkeep costs, since we're building up a lot of mages pretty quickly, and those mages are not sacred, so their upkeep costs are significant. Uh, we've got Ophagion, who is air and water, so he is definitely going to be searching for magic sites as well. Um, he's not a very good thug, but he is kind of cool. We like him. Ophagion, you know, you're all, you're all right in my book. More importantly, that's all the uh, the paths I need for right now. So we're going to switch this place over to Magi, and yeah, keep churning out the militia for now for patrolling purposes. Yeah, we got those 27 militia going up there to patrol. We're going to need more patrollers up here than the than just 39 because we are going to oh, we're going to we're going to focus some blood hunting on on Halemire there. So, thanks for watching. I'll see y'all in turn 22. All right, folks, turn 22. We assassinated 10 more cultists. Uh, unfortunately, we didn't get any of the leaders. So, three cultists leading actually more skeletons than I thought he had. 245 total long dead. Uh, managed to patrol out and kill all of our assassins. So we lost 12 assassins for a total kill count of uh, 21 cultists. 12 to 21 is an acceptable ratio. That's a ratio at which my assassins made their money back. And of course, that's 21 cultists that will now not be generating long dead ever. We've permanently reduced uh, Kalkheim's long dead generation. Uh, we are moving our army into Monarch Woods. So the army attacking Monarch Woods. We have some random undisciplined troops behind the front lines. Uh, Carmont is leading the infantry. As I reasoned, those are the units most likely to need a big old morale boost. So we've got 165 infantry under Carmont, primarily uh, about 145 uh, Burgmeister Guard, and then also some Bone Tribe Beast Hunters whose morale goes up to very high levels. Shaggy is leading the Centaur Chariots, and a few extra Bone Drive Beast Hunters. We can actually give those Bone Drive Beast Hunters to, like, Utheldon or something. And if we wanted to, we could split the, the uh, Chariots up. But I think we're just going to have them all in one giant mass. Those Chariots are going to swing around the flank. I'm actually going to shift that up just a little bit to let them swing a little bit more easily around the flank. Yep, like that. Keep going. How far can I go? Yowza. Um, and uh, attack the... The, the masses of undead. Meanwhile, we've got Carmont dropping Fanaticism to give everyone on the battlefield plus one morale, and then throwing Ashes to Ashes. Shaiki also throwing Ashes to Ashes right off the bat. The enemy don't have missile units, so we shouldn't be too worried about all of that. And we've also got uh, a bunch of 
extra commanders just as like assassin bait and such just to, you know just in case over here uh we got a couple of really really good random events including so we got the fertility cult in hail which you don't care much about and then in the mercs two thousand gold plus a ton of gems ten fire gems two death gems fantastic stuff really fantastic Hailmire then gave me another 420 gold just for shits and giggles and Wellred gave me three more earth gems i love luck three i love it so much uh, unrest in Hailmire is through the roof we do have pretty significant patrol force right now up to 39 total patrollers but we're also moving in athel with another 34 to help keep a lid on things we're not blood hunting any of our forts anymore at the moment we are however casting rites of immortality to summon our first vampire uh, we will reawaken uh, Avon P. Iyer, the, uh, the, <laughs> the foreign correspondent for the People's Daily, and he will uh, go forth to report on uh, things at the front line. Although, actually, he may start off by just blood hunting for us. So, where vampire production is now starting, uh, it will accelerate. Hopefully, we'll be getting one every two turns or so for a little bit, and then accelerating up to one every turn. We'll be spending our blood slaves just on pumping out the vampires, and we will just basically use that as extra, you know, extra mage production. We've got two forts pumping out the stalkers now. We've got two stalkers per turn coming out of there, two stalkers per turn coming out of there. We're using our excess gold to upgrade everybody to castles. We're building castles everywhere. You're upgrading to a citadel, actually. That'll take two turns. We're also recruiting a commander here where we got this free lab to build another fort on Esquania. Uh, and that will, I know otherwise I might have blood hunted this province, but the income is really, really nice. Uh, Sedica, we are still, of course, going to blood hunt the hell out of, as well as Jerob and Dragon Rige. Uh, we've got these four, these four bros here. Uh, next turn, my blood slave income is going to be plowed into Sanguine Dowsing Rods to use for making our blood more efficient. And we should be able to ramp up really, really quickly to where we have the blood slave income necessary to be churning out a vampire every turn. And then we may even go up to vampire every, uh, two vampires a turn fairly quickly that would take almost 90 blood slaves a turn so that might not happen till turn 40 or so but uh hopefully by that time we'll just be spitting them out non-stop and using them as like disposable raiders and shit i'm hoping that this army can take this i think they can they do have some deer tribe archers and long dead horsemen but i think our burgmeister guard can just kind of tank the damage long enough for the chariots to sweep around the flanks and run everyone down uh, what I don't want, of course, is my chariots routing through the Burgmeister Guard and causing chaos among them. Unfortunately, I do have some starvation, which is uh, lowering morale for some of my guys. Um, but I can stick stick up to morale 9 even with the starving ones. Um, and of course, they're not all starving. Some of them are starving, many of them are not. And the ones who are not have morale 13, so average morale in these groups is still pretty decent. Uh, morale 11 for this guy, since he has two, uh, two stars. So yeah, morale in these groups is still pretty decent. Uh, morale among the Centaur Chariots is less than ideal, some of them, but we should be able to make it, I think. Um, I had I had just kind of forgotten that Berg, that uh, all these units ate so much food. And this province has surprisingly low supplies, actually, compared to everywhere else in my empire. That, I think, is the province with the lowest supplies. Yeah, it is. The single lowest supplies are here in Edoral, 285. So, we'll roll into Monarch Woods, we'll do what damage we can, uh, I think we'll be able to take it and claim the throne, but we'll see. And then, of course, we will also have to field uh, probably an immediate counterattack by hundreds of Ulmish Long Dead. So, in any case, that's basically the turn. In terms of research, we're going to hit our Conjuration level 5 this turn, which is great. It means we'll be able to summon Ujigami, and of course we'll be able to spam out our Heavenly Fires, and we'll have be able to summon Elementals as well, which are excellent excellent anti-undead tools after that racing down enchantment to enchantment level four and we're going to uh focus primarily on the crossbows i think so let's just churn out the crossbows here real quick we're going to cancel all the burgmeister guard and just crossbow it right the hell up that's a lot of crossbows <laughs> it's a lot of crossbows the muscle of the Monferrada is going to end up with a lot of crossbows very quickly um, and he can also cast Flaming Arrows by himself, actually, and so we wouldn't even need a communion to do it. Uh, Domar can also lead some crossbows. Um, I can't recruit anything there because there's no resources. That's right. Mm -hmm -hmm. 
And we're still pumping out militia for patrol duties. Although really what we want is uh, we want to use some kind of summon for patrolling duties. Eh. Might have to get I might actually have to get reanimation and start spending death gems reanimating skeletons to patrol with. Because I just need I, I need uh zero upkeep patrollers. Or or more pertinently I might recruit some deer tribe shamans purely to summon wolves and get me some nature income. Because I could I could use some nature and wolves as free patrollers for my blood slaves would be really, really useful. So I don't have to use militia that I have to pay. Uh, my ideal, of course, is to eventually have completely upkeepless blood patrollers so that I don't have to pay them and they won't uh, depress my income. But we'll see what we can do. I think this fight's going to go my way. Uh, after that, I don't know how many skeletons he actually has between these two provinces. I know that here in Sailor's Haven, he has about 235. Uh, every one of my stalkers took at least one skeleton with them, so bless their little stalkery hearts. Um, they did the best they could with the time they were given. He's got a mix. He's got some standard long dead and then a whole bunch of the Ulmish long dead as well. Um, his reanimation, it looks like his priest reanimation is giving him like like 75% or 80% or something Ulmish long dead. And then the occasional mixed in uh, non-national long dead. But as you can see here, uh, our, our poor little stalker boy just charged on in. Uh, very slowly, since this one happened to be crippled. He stabbed a skeleton, and then he was just fucking shanked from all sides with, by great swords. I guess it isn't really shanking with great swords, it's more just hacking and, and chopping. But yeah, so, that's the turn. Uh, research is going well, nobody has any globals up yet, which is actually kind of interesting. I, I was thinking that Mother Oak might be going up pretty soon. Um, I've contacted Prime. Prime seems to think that he's still in decent shape, but I am still infiltrating some assassins down that way. Uh, we border over Lala over here. Now this is actually kind of interesting because we did border Sacreds of Hell. I haven't really been thinking about this, but we did border the Sacreds of Hell over on this side, didn't we? And now it's Rulala. So is Rulala attacking the Sacreds of Hell? I don't know. That seems like that would be a very confident thing to do. Uh, in Fenica. Also, interestingly, we were hit by... These are clearly uh, blood hunting patrollers. So he's got Diabolus patrol, uh, blood hunting over here. Whole bunch of militia, and he's also got some Agarthan Light Crossbowmen and Downshi patrolling in this area as well. So our scout was killed in Fenica. That's fine. Um, overall, so yeah, the, the assassins spent themselves well, but probably not going to work again. I didn't quite reach critical mass. If I'd reached the critical mass necessary to actually kill every cultist in Sailor's Haven, we probably could have kept it locked down for a while, since you have to have unassassinated commanders there in order to patrol. Um, but we didn't manage to kill the ones that were leading the army, which is sad. We did make a significant dent in his cultist population there, um, but now he's going to need to be patrolling. Now he'll, be, he'll just be patrolling every fort. Um, there's no reason he wouldn't do that. In fact, there's no reason I shouldn't do that either. So, what I'm going to do is, I'm just going to give all these crossbows to Domar temporarily. And Domar can patrol with them. And I don't have many units standing around otherwise. Uh, Danfosar is building this castle. He can have those guys. And after he builds the castle and then upgrades it to his citadel, he can move out with them to help patrol the blood hunts. So, that's turn 22. And I'll see you all in turn 23, where hopefully we will secure this throne. Take care until then.